you gotta hold it, put it in race mode, and then it actually turns off the infotainment system. And then, I forgot, I think it's three seconds. One, two, three. Oh, shit. Man, the anticipation is killing me. We got something sick coming up here. Stay tuned. There he is. Waikum, salam, G. I put it in a quiet mode. I was driving off. Uh, That's true. It's a hybrid, so you know, it's a little different. Though. That's sick. Another beautiful day and another beautiful car. I'm over here with my boy Ahmad and it's 2017 NSX. It's not just any regular NSX, it's got some stuff done to it. So today we'll learn a little bit about this car and if you'd like to buy an NSX, you'll know something that others don't. Visibility up front was actually not that great, but this visibility is actually great. That's the one awesome. knock on this car is the infotainment system. And there you'll see in any review that there's only a few reviews, but everybody talks. This is the same infotainment system on a freaking Honda Civic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or uh, even Acura TL, uh, any of the top, any Acura or what was it? The MDX has the exact same like setup. I think it's pretty easy. It's pretty functional. And I mean, this car is also pretty reliable. That's awesome. So, it's a hybrid. It's not full electric. Please fasten passenger yes. seat belt. I feel like, because the sound in here is perfect, we should yeah. just do the whole thing from in here. So obviously, right now we're in quiet mode, but when I put it in sport mode, I mean, it's not like it's like a, le like a fake noise. It's real noise. This is also the first mid-engine. Ah, you gotta be kidding me, bro. That no sucks. Way. Let me take it to the borough then, because that's on the side too. Yes. So you were at that infotainment system. Yeah, so basically, I mean, it's pretty basic to be honest with you, unfortunately. Oh. You think I can make it underneath? I, I, you know, I, I thought so. I could, I, I didn't think so, but I'll try. Y'all think I can make it underneath? What's that? Y'all think I can make it underneath? I don't know. Well, let's find out, homie. I don't think so, actually, yeah, you got it. I don't think so. I think you got it. It was too much. Way too much. It was like uh, it started around 140. I think 180 actually. Oh, this shit. one, the exact build on this spec was 205 and some change. That's I got the commentary on brakes and all that shit, right? But yeah. at the end of the day, man, you get a GTR, and I know everybody talks trash about a GTR not like having any build changes or anything like that. Or, you know, it's been the same car for all these years. But all honestly, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Man, that car, you know, with the simple mods, Getting, like on both tons, you're getting 800, 700, 700 wheel horsepower easily with both tons, you know. Versus this car, I mean, this ECU hasn't been cracked yet. This is on a piggyback to him, by the way. It's a JB4, it's not a crack ECU. It's basically the ECU is tricking. There's a computer that tricks the ECU to make it run faster, you know. That's it's on sick. stock turbos, and, and you know, just with race gas alone, this car goes that fast. Imagine somebody cracked the ECU on this vehicle, you know what I mean. Another problem is a lot of people don't know what kind of car it is. It doesn't have that notoriety. Only like people who know cars obviously do. But yeah, people look at it and they're like, "What is that?" And if you ever see any other NSXs on the road, people are like afraid, ashamed of the Acura badge. I've seen all of them that I've seen, except for maybe one. They're all debadged. I don't know why Honda, like what Honda's doing with all the new cars. They, they, they know the formula of what'll get more sales, but that they're dropping the ball like with the new Integra oh, yeah, and this yeah, yeah. I, you know I was the I new was Type R Civic is okay but yeah for me look I, I'll be real with you I think the Type R Civic is probably the one of the greatest four wheel drop cars ever made yes that that car is, is hands down they did the Nuremberg fastest Nuremberg top for a four wheel drop car I'll, I'll put it in a quiet mode right now you can't even hear it yeah it's like any other hybrid I could, like driving my Prius 
I have two hybrids. I got this and I, I daily a Prius. But look, if I were to come in late night at, you know, they don't want to wake the neighbors, it's quiet as hell. Again. So the engine doesn't get higher than the rear tire. Ooh. They've like designed, and these some of the <laughs> Honda. I'm not gonna lie, this car took forever for them to come out. That's another reason why That's they sell. That's a real low center of gravity then. Exactly, it actually sits right over here. Like it's really, it's mid-engine, right? But the engine sits like right up over here, kind of right behind you. And then doesn't get above the rear tire. So that's why it hugs like if you ever were to drive it, it's all-wheel drive and they got this torque vectoring technology that when you churn I mean, it's bs to be honest with you but like the computer i guess picks how much torque to give it to each wheel can you feel the turn. difference when you're taking the turns yeah i mean i had the mg gt and that was rear wheel drive before obviously that car had trouble gripping just because the amount of torque you had to the rear tires but i mean this car being all-wheel drive it definitely definitely hugs Okay, so with, with this rear buttress, I mean, it's kind of unique in, in that sense, but it's also, it was kind of ahead of its time in the sense that when this came out, not really, nobody was really doing hybrid the right, right way. I mean, BMW had the i8, but that really wasn't a good hybrid, nor was it a good sports car. It was just, or good yeah. buttresses. Yeah, or good buttresses, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But then uh, look at Ferrari, look at look at all these big name cars now, like everybody's going the hybrid route, even McLaren, you know? Only Porsche 918 at the time was the only like real hybrid at that time that came out. Uh, and so I mean from that standpoint I mean they they definitely Honda was definitely ahead of uh, the time the damn cup holders you pay $200,000 for a car and they don't give you real cup holders that's a that sucks you got real trunk space though I can fit my backpack it heats up because the engine's right here it has a carbon fire package position look this is the cup holder so don't put a cake back here yeah oh. or ice cream or anything with mouth that's amazing. Especially if you get the exhaust on. It's got the glass right here too, so you can see the engine. Two hundred thousand dollar cup holder right here. Well, it's not that loose. That, that GTR, like I don't care what anybody says, that's the best car I ever made. Like hands down, I. This is a great car, but in all I agree. I can't wait to review a GTR. I got a friend here has a GTR. Uh, he's having it too. Yeah. Do. But hands down, everything about it, price, bang for buck, what you get. I mean, zero to 60 time launch control. You know, everything about it is just, for me, I think it's the best. But we reviewing your NSX, bro. <laughs> that, bro. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So give me five things you hate about the car and five things you like about it. So number one, the first thing that I hate the most, the self like the auto leveling now, even the new corvette comes with the you know uh basically the the front goes up in that sense i already scratched the front bumper as you can see uh science and speed makes a kit where you push the cruise control and the, the front bumper goes up number two uh i'll be honest it's a, the acura badging i mean i don't know the fact that it's an acura it's a honda doesn't get as much appeal as it does number three obviously i think the main one is the infotainment system it could have done a little bit better in terms of like uh collision uh, awareness uh you know the turn signal side what do they call that when uh, someone's on your side they tell you that uh, oh yeah the little lane light departure things. and all that shit. yeah it doesn't have any of those features and then uh i guess number four the carpet sandwich are nice and all but they squeal sometimes in the morning and then uh Number five is, is tunability, man. Somebody please crack this ECU. They're saying that K tuning is, is almost there, but when Honda made this car, they kind of made the ECU apparently pretty hard to crack, and uh, nobody's cracked it yet. I think once they crack the ECU, this car is easy thousand horsepower all day. Ew, what's wrong with them? They're like trying to do this in-house Ferrari shit. Yeah, yeah. No one's cracked the ECU. Science and Speed uses a JV4 piggyback again, but that, that's the main main issue with this car. And then the five things you like. So I know I said because it's the Acura, I, I don't like it, or a Honda, whatever. At the end of the day, actually, the reliability of it being a Honda, I mean, you can't go wrong with that. This car will probably drive up to 100,000 miles without any problems. I, I, that's what I assume. Uh, it's really sleek. Not many people know about it. It's not in your face as like a Ferrari, a Lambo, or a McLaren. Uh, you know, I it drives pretty smooth. It's comfortable. We saw we, were, we put that. We put it in quiet mode. You really I believe we found the sexiest angle of the car right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, that's actually the side angle, the side this profile. Is, uh... it's, it's something different. Uh, and I love the carbon fiber, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got carbon fiber side skirts, the front bumper, and then uh, the carbon fiber, even something as, as, as simple as the, the uh, this little carbon fiber package for the engine covers was quite a penny as well, 200 MSRP. But yeah, other That's than that, amazing. I mean, it's, a, it's a great car, I actually kind of like it. And then obviously, 22, they made the Type S, and the Type S is like really hard to get. That, that car's been holding value, but it's honestly, other than like some of the body and, and, and you know, some of, some of the like the front lip and all that 
it's essentially the same car, I think. That's With, sick. Just the two. You know? So, are those radiators or intercoolers on the side? It has, uh, I think, eight intercoolers. Or, I don't know, six or eight. I, I can't remember. Six? It has a shit ton of intercoolers for sure. It sounds like it. There's two on each side and then two, I think, back here as well. That's amazing. So, yeah, I mean, and the exhaust kind of sits right up over here. Sounds the speed makes a good exhaust for this car, so does fab speed. I mean, there's some really good, good uh, exhausts out there, but uh, to be honest with you, when it's in quiet mode, you can't hear a thing. Definitely. My only recommendation also is tires. It's really important. I got MP uh, S4S's. It's all-wheel drive, but when it rains with these tires, sometimes you're not, you're not gripping too well. Does it feel like it's uh, doing a little, having a little bit of understeer issues yep. on the front corners? For sure. That, that's the one thing I would say. It definitely has a little bit of understeer. And the shin radius is not the best either. Nah, that's cool. Um, can we get the, can we feel how powerful she is? Yes, sir. Of course. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Let's feel that launch control. Yeah, definitely. Look at this. It's a beautiful Defender. All the way to the right, that's race mode. We're in Mexico, by the way. So, yes. Three seconds. One, I love two, Tijuana. Two, three. That was amazing. So, how much horsepower do you think yours has at the moment? Uh, nothing crazy. So, it's weird, right? Yes, horsepower, right? This car, you're kind of cheating in the sense that it is hybrid, right? Mm -hmm. So from the zero to 60 launch, that's why it was, it was so quick. It felt so quick because those electric motors, I think it has three electric motors, two in the back, one in the front, or the other way around, two in the front, one in the back. Uh, and at the end of the day, like, those are mainly doing the, the work off the launch. You know what I mean? Yeah. So horsepower combined, I think I'm probably getting about 650 wheel horsepower. That's nice. Yeah, but like, a GTR can easily get a thousand horsepower, you know what I mean? Like, and in comparison, the fact that it's still with race gas and the, and the same amount of horsepower, I'd say, we're getting 0 to 0.60, 2.6, 2.7 ish, you know? So, I mean, it's kind of relative in that sense, but yeah, it's not. I think once this ECU is cracked, it'll easily get a thousand horsepower, I think. Wheel horsepower. But. And then you can't go to first either, so. <laughs> that was awesome. Damn, that shit knocked off your seatbelt. And I think, like, let's be honest, man. I, I think you take 90% of the cars on the road. Like, in terms of racing, like, you know what I mean? Like, a Lambo or a Ferrari. Or, I mean, granted, those aren't like real race cars. Like, nowadays, you buy uh, a G80 M3, you do a simple 200 cars and 700 horsepower. You know what I'm saying? Like, you do a 335. Think of a turbo conversion. That car's getting 700 horsepower all day. You know what I mean? But the issue is everyone has one. Yeah, and, and dependability, right? I can probably do that launch control probably quite a few times. And by the way, this car's still on the warranty. It's certified pre owned with CPO. Oh, hell yeah. You know, so like at the end of the day, like, it's just, it's different. Sure. Oh, is oh, nice. there you go. Blue Accurate team. Yeah. yeah. The, the interior is nice. Yeah, it's got suede and it's, it's, it's definitely... It's got very good build quality. Yeah. That's for sure. All right, man. Thanks for sharing your car with us. Hey, man, I appreciate you coming. I appreciate you.